a wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video I wanted to discuss a somewhat intriguing new study that essentially tackles the idea of violation of Einsteinian principles when it comes to objects moving super fast in real life and when it comes to combining Einsteinian principles with quantum physics. And though the topic itself might sound kind of loaded and somewhat difficult to understand, I'm gonna do my best to make it easy and to help you see the main point. The point being that Right now, it looks like Einsteinian principles still seem to hold, even based on some of the most recent evidence from one of the most powerful events we've ever witnessed. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess first let's start with the actual theory and the original propositions. And so here we're actually talking about something known as the inertial frame of reference. This is one of the main principles in the theory of relativity, but it's technically something that Einstein borrowed from somewhere else. This was originally proposed by the Dutch physicist Hendrik Lorentz when talking about electrodynamics. He was actually discussing this in the 1800s and it was much later that Einstein realized this might apply to other things as well. And specifically, it might apply to his newly proposed space-time and essentially the entire universe and everything in it. With the idea itself being really easy. It essentially suggests that, generally speaking, laws of physics should actually look the same to everyone as long as they're traveling in a straight line with no acceleration. And this assumed equivalency is what we refer to as Lorentz invariance, sometimes abbreviated as LIV. And so basically here the idea is that no matter where you are, and I guess no matter when you are, as long as you're traveling in a straight line and there is no acceleration, you should be seeing and experiencing exactly the same physics. I mean, technically it makes sense, right? But here there was actually another assumption. And the second assumption is in regards to the speed of light. And while the speed of light should also be the same for everyone in any inertial reference frame, no matter how fast they're moving and no matter what direction they're moving in. And that's maybe a little bit more counterintuitive. Basically, it means that even if you're moving at pretty much really close to the speed of light, the speed of light itself is still going to be appearing to you as the speed of light. You're not going to see photons moving much slower, instead you're going to see them in different energy, either redshifted or blue shifted. And even though this might sound really strange, this obviously has been proven many many times. And so even if you're moving at like 0.999% of the speed of light, in your own reference frame, you're still going to be seeing photons move at the speed of light in every direction. But it does make things look just a little bit different. There should be a really old video on the channel where I try to simulate this using a simulation and a video game produced by MIT, and that video should be somewhere in the description. But in essence, this Lorentz invariance has been tested many times and has withstood these tests for over a century. But in search for the so-called theory of everything, scientists studying the idea known as the quantum gravity, where they essentially try to combine relativistic effects with the quantum effects, did actually make a somewhat intriguing proposition back in the days. In their proposition, when things move super fast, we're talking about over 99% the speed of light, and when particles start to acquire certain energy, that invariance might start to get kind of violated. And so in this idea, for anything that's moving super fast, but more specifically for high energy photons, the vacuum no longer appears as empty space. Instead, it actually starts to act as a kind of a medium, slowing some of these photons down, as if they were moving through water or through glass. Now the actual slowdown in this case is not really that significant, but it's large enough to be measured if these photons travel for a very long time. Although according to these quantum gravity ideas, this should only happen with very high energy photons, with energy near 10 to the power of 19 billion electron volts. And obviously here the question was, ok, so does this invariance get violated with these high energy photons, which could then obviously take us closer to getting that theory of everything and thus combining quantum mechanics with Einsteinian theory of relativity, or is this something that's still not understood? And does Lorentz invariance still stays in power even at high velocities and high energies? And well, to answer these questions, researchers from China used one of the biggest facilities that's able to detect gamma rays and cosmic rays. This is known as LASSO or Large High Altitude Air Shower Observatory. An observatory designed to observe various air showers 
usually triggered by gamma rays and cosmic rays. Now in the past it's already made quite a lot of different discoveries, but most importantly, back in 2022 it observed the most powerful event we've ever seen. The now infamous GRB 22109A, more commonly known as BOAT, the brightest of all time. Now you can learn more about this event in some of the previous videos in the description, but this is now believed to be one of the rarest events ever seen, the event so powerful that it actually changed the atmosphere of planet Earth from 2.5 billion light years away. And in the process, as you can imagine, it did produce quite a lot of very powerful gamma rays. And well apparently, at this time, Lasso was pointed in just the right direction to detect everything including the afterglow that lasted for 10 hours. And within just the first two hours, the Cherenkov detectors measured approximately 64,000 photons with ridiculous energies of 7 trillion electron volts. As a matter of fact, in those few hours, this bizarre event seems to have released as much energy as the entire Milky Way galaxy in 500 million years. So basically imagine a galaxy shining for 500 million years and that's the amount of energy that was suddenly released from this explosion in just like 10 seconds. And because this produced some of the most powerful gamma rays, and also because this was coming from such a faraway distance, this of course was a perfect opportunity to try to find signs of the violation of the Lorentz invariance by using these high energy gamma rays. And the way this would appear in data would be basically a slightly different time of arrival for gamma rays that have much higher energy. So basically if we have a gamma ray that's in much higher frequency than another gamma ray, in theory, assuming quantum gravity is correct, it would have a slightly slower speed compared to the actual speed of light. And that's once again because the vacuum itself hypothetically would start to act as a medium, thus slowing light down. This phenomenon is also referred to as the photon dispersion, and you might be familiar with this because we usually see it when light travels through water or glass. But obviously this has never been seen in actual vacuum of outer space. And so the scientists whose study you can find in a description crunched some numbers and got the results. Here they essentially compared 10 separate gamma ray bands with each band containing photons of different energy. And then they compared all of this to the overall arrival time for all of these 64,000 photons. And the results suggest that there seems to be no difference. All of them arrived at the same time, even though they traveled for 2.5 billion light years. And so because there was no statistical violation of Lorentz invariance, first of all it once again confirms Einsteinian principles, but second of all it potentially invalidates some of the assumptions from quantum gravity, or at least obtains a much lower limit on the energy where quantum gravity might start exhibiting certain effects. And for a lot of theoretical physicists, this is a super important discovery. Mostly because this is predicted in most quantum gravity theories that tries to unify Einsteinian principles with quantum mechanics. But because this event produced no such proof, it presents quantum gravity scientists with a bit of a dilemma. But this is still not a complete violation because, in this case, the actual signal from this Lorentz invariance violation is expected to be super tiny. So maybe this was just not detected because it was just much smaller than what the scientists measured. But importantly, in this case researchers were able to create a new technique. A technique that can actually help us measure all of this and thus determine if Lorentz invariance does get violated by photons of high energy by using some other observations from somewhere else. And so this is not a proof that quantum gravity is incorrect, instead this is a much more stringent limit on Lorentz invariance and the propositions from quantum gravity. Still, I found this to be a really cool study and a really intriguing way to use the observations from the most powerful explosion we've ever seen in order to test propositions from various somewhat difficult to test ideas. Which means that we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or even more updates on quantum gravity and our attempts at explaining the universe using both quantum physics and general relativity. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.